Now we talk about autocorrelation function and partial autocorrelation function in some detail. So say you're given yt. So this is say a second order stationary process. It has a mean mu and variance sigma square. So yt is nothing but a bunch of numbers. So you have y1, y2, y3, so on. And say you have 100 such values. So this is a process. It has some mean mean is mu. These bunch of numbers also have a variance called sigma square. So then autocorrelation is the time lag t. This is given as y of t minus mu then y of t plus tau minus mu over sigma square. So the partial autocorrelation function of lag k is the autocorrelation of yt and yt plus k. So you have this uh, lag but now you are removing the linear dependence so this linear dependence is completely removed um, so the idea is this so autocorrelation is nothing but the correlation function but for correlation you need to find two series so you can only find correlation between two series so say you have series one is going from 1 to 100 and the series 2 is going from 1 to 50. So these are both part of the same time series but now you can find the correlation between this series with 100 values and you find the correlation with this series with 50 values and we call it autocorrelation because this small series is part of this big series and there is a lag of 50. So that is what time lag is tau here time lag is 50. So that is precisely what autocorrelation is. What is partial autocorrelation? In partial autocorrelation, it is slightly more complicated. You try to remove the linear dependence. So in case you uh, you have this dependence, so y100 is somehow dependent upon y99. And it is also say dependent upon y98. And then there is some error process. So you try to remove this y99 and y98 before you start taking the linear dependence. So here if you were trying to compare this series with say y1 all the way to y99. So now this series has 100 terms. This series has 99 terms. You can find autocorrelation between the two. And uh, say you have another series which goes from y1 to y98. You can again find autocorrelation between this series of 100 terms and this series of 98 terms. But if you want to find partial autocorrelation, what you do is you remove this effect and you remove this effect because both these, uh, this y100 is dependent upon 99 and 98. So you remove this y100 from here and its dependence upon y99 and y98. So you remove the linear dependence and then you take the partial autocorrelation. So partial autocorrelation or partial correlation, it gives us an idea of number of lags in the data. Because if there is a lag, like if there is a dependence upon past data, then it will remove it. Now, um, let me give you concretely an example so that to understand what I mean. So first thing is, notice that this partial autocorrelation is very important. It gives us an idea of number of lags. So let me write down a stock price. So say this is the price of commodities S1, S2, S3 all the way to say S100. So this is say the uh, price of cotton. And you do not know what the price of cotton, um, which time series it follows. So say you could have a time series like this. So this is just nothing but a vector, vector, yeah? So this is just a list of values. So say you denote this list of values by S. So now say you have this process, either ST is equal to phi of ST minus one plus error. This could be there, or the series is generated from this phi one ST minus one plus phi two ST minus two plus this error term or it could be generated like this. So we will come to this again in future lectures, but it is 
uh, good to build motivation and understanding right now so you do not know from where it is coming so what will help us so if you think you want to find out which one of these processes it is you can immediately say partial autocorrelation function help me so you do this p a c f of s so this is the r command now this will give you a bunch of graphs so say if your graph is like this so these are the axis and then these are the values so this is the value something like this comes out so notice that there is only one significant and the bands will 95% confidence bands will come out so this is the graph of partial autocorrelation function so if there is only one significant value that means this is this process this is one value but instead of this graph you could get another graph say you get another graph which is like this so you have another value here which is significant which is like this so that means there are two values which are significant others are non significant if you get graph like this that means this is uh this is the underlying process say uh you don't get graph like this you get another graph so another graph is something like this so you get three values so the third value is significant but it is uh going down so that means this is this graph it is not one it is not two it is third because there are three bars coming like this and it is also telling you this phi 3 here will be negative dependence upon variable 3 is negative so this first one will be a dependence upon variable 1 t minus 1 if the second comes out significant this is dependence upon variable t minus 2 if third out comes significant it is dependence upon variable t minus 3 so let us see an example so in the previous lecture we had discussed this simulation now here there was only one dependence that was on previous pass point 9 so if there is only one dependence we expect one significant value and in fact when you draw the partial autocorrelation function this is how the partial autocorrelation function looked like there is only one a significant value everything else lies within the blue bounds and uh, when we study AR2 process, we will see that there will be two spikes here instead of one. So this partial autocorrelation function is extremely important to immediately understand whether this time series is coming from one lag, two lag or three lags.